Greetings ladies and gents, and welcome to today's Reddit series video from the subreddit HFY called Flintstone Chapter 28 Family Values Written by some guy named Ted My son, there is much I need to tell you. The stranger said his thunderous voice subdued to a low rumble. You could start with who you are, that may be helpful, I replied. The stranger's voice was notable, and I would have remembered hearing it before. He spoke with a familiar tone that suggested he knew me, but I did not have the smallest clue as to who he was. I am the one who wrapped you up in a cloth after you were born. I am the one who watched you take your first steps. I am the one that heard you say your first words. I am your father, Tedex. My father is dead. Who are you? I asked strangely, harshly. Were I able to see him, I might have glared at him. I do not lie, you are my blood. This could not be my father. He did not sound like my father had, nor did the stranger even sound like a Jahan. I couldn't actually tell what species he was. I realized his hand was still on my shoulder, and I reached out to brush it away. Smooth skin met my fingers at contact, confirming that the stranger was not a Jahan. Do you think that because I am blind that I cannot tell that you're not even a Jahan? What do you want? I asked, my voice growing still harsher. I did not know why this stranger was here, but I was growing increasingly annoyed. Oh, I had forgotten I was wearing this face. Beg pardon, it'll only be a moment. The way he said it was a light and jovial, almost as if it was an afterthought. What? I began before I was interrupted by a gentle ripping noise not unlike that of paper tearing or a thin cloth being torn. The noise was soft and almost unnoticeable, but there was something about it, something that made the tearing sound the most important noise in the room. That's better, the stranger said. At least, I guess it was him. I knew that no one else had entered the room, but the voice that had spoken was entirely different from before. It was still forceful and quietly thunderous, but... The subtleties, the nuances were entirely changed. Gone was the high air of importance, the buried implication of superiority. It had been difficult to spot here, but it had been there. The new voice was earthly and humble, warm and inviting. It was the kind of voice that one listened to while bundling up to a fire, roasting treasure nuts and drinking hot crocolan. The voice which allowed you to sleep in sleepless nights. It explained the world to you when seeing it for the first time. I knew who those things were because I had heard it before. It was the voice of my father. Do you believe me now, Di? It was the use of my childhood nickname that fully convinced me. Dad? I asked without meaning to. Yes, my boy, it's me. A thousand questions and thoughts stumbled through my mind, but before I could ask any of them, I opened my mouth and said, if I could see, I would punch you in the face. I suppose I deserve that. That simple, matter-of-fact acceptance made the once both angry and relieved. Angry because he did not try to defend himself, and relieved because I had not upset him. You would, I agreed. A man doesn't leave his family without warning. Did you ever think about coming back? Why have you shown up just now? Because I'm so injured, I can't attack you. No, Di, no. I never wanted to leave. You and your mother meant the world to me, but there are things that I had to do. I snorted. What could be more important than family? The lives of every single being in the galaxy, for one. You... What? The lives of every single being in the galaxy, he repeated. I started to laugh. It hurt after a while, and I tried to stop. The pain in my chest eventually caused me to lean forwards, arm curled around my chest. Son, thy father said, sounding concerned. I felt a hand on my shoulder, and the mirth was replaced with anger. The laughter died, and I swatted away the hand. The sound of my father's voice had pushed the fact that his hand had been skin smooth for my mind. But when I touched it again, there was fur. I could have sworn that there had only been one being in the room, but clearly I had been wrong. Where'd the first guy go? My question surprised my father. It was a moment before he responded. There is no one else here. 
Don't lie. The first hand I knocked off my shoulder was smooth skin. Your hand is covered in fur. Unless you grew your fur in less than five minutes, there was another being in this room. I did, he replied, voice even. Did what? I did grow fur in less than five minutes. Bullcrap! I could hear the feet shuffling and I felt him move around the bed to stand at my side. I felt a touch of fingers on my left shoulder. I twisted away but a movement hurt my chest, preventing me from twisting away too far. My son, there is much I need to tell you, my father repeated. Would that include the fact that you were a shapeshifter and therefore not actually a Jahan? I asked sarcastically, meaning silence met my words. No, no. My father hesitated before speaking again. Tedex, what do you know about those called the Elder Beings? They are a fable, a story told to children when they ask how the universe came into existence. They do not exist. I said adamantly, if this was going where I thought it was going, the doctors must have made me some really good drugs. Well, that part is wrong. We do not create the universe. We weren't even the first to live in it. But that is not relevant to what I'm telling you. I am an elder being, Tedex. My, our race is a very old one, and we've learned a few tricks along the way. You're lying. Why must you disbelieve everything I say? Yeah, maybe because I haven't seen you for decades. I can't actually see you, so I can't tell if you're telling the truth. And because you're making ridiculous claims about being a member of a mythical race. Those are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I can think of more if you want. He gave a long, drawn-out sigh. I'd imagine this going differently. I heard him mutter under his breath. He clearly did not mean for me to hear it. But if he had really wanted to, he could have kept quiet. Really, how had you imagined it going? Surely a million-year-old being would know how someone might react to the long-lost father dropping in out of the blue, telling stories of ancient races. How did you hear? Never mind. I could hear a hard tapping sound, like the nail on a tooth. I am not a million years old, I'm only a millennium. Most of that time was not spent with people. Look, I said kinder than I th had been expecting, you've given me no proof of anything. All I know is that you are unlikely my father and you think that you are an elder being. Proof? You want proof? His voice became hushed and still. The way Clint's got when things were about to get ugly. You were dead, life gone, breath extinguished, an erg stomped your chest in. I saved you, I reconstructed your organs, but before that, I had to kill the erg that killed you. The first being I've killed in several hundred years, I tore him to pieces. Ask your friend Paul, he was there, he saw it, do you require further proof? But if you are the one that saved me, that means that you were Mylak, and Mylak is a Harith. Indeed, do you believe I can shapeshift now? How was the only response I could muster? Do you really expect me to reveal the secrets behind the Elder Beings? Perhaps I'm a chronicle to you and a history of our race, or would you prefer to know the meaning of life? 42, before you ask. What? Unimportant. I don't have time for all the preparation to tell you anything, so I'll keep it short. I'm sure that you are wondering how you came to be. The question had crossed my mind, races could not crossbreed, but my mother had been pure Jahan. Of that, I was certain. But if my father was truly an elder being, as he claimed to be, and I was becoming more and more inclined to believe him, then my conception should not have been possible. Yes, I said simply. Good. No son of mine would be without curiosity. I can see the question forming on your face. Yes, you are the only child that I know of. If you would grant me a few minutes of uninterrupted speech... I will try to cover as much as I can. I did not hesitate. It wasn't like I had anywhere to go. Go ahead. Thank you. Millions of years ago, the race that would become known as the Elder Beings came into existence. The galaxy of our origin is far from here. Then it is unimportant for this tale. Some of us took it upon ourselves to guide and nurture the life we found across the universe. My, now... 
Ancestors came to this galaxy a millennia ago, and since then our family line has been intertwined amongst the galaxy and its inhabitants. Our race's presence in this galaxy is marginal, at best, and I am the only elder being in this section of the universe. How exactly does one nurture and guard the life of the galaxy? From what I can tell, you've been fading at that. War, genocide, slavery run rampant. I interrupted my father. I had promised silence, but there were too many questions. What makes you think that I'm guiding life to peace? He asked. His voice was sincere and without a trace of deception. I was too stunned to reply. I'm only joking, son. The answer is that I'm not enough. One elder being for a galaxy of over a hundred space-faring races is not nearly enough. Even if they do consider me a god, and if I'm a being truly honest with myself, I am not well suited to this life. What do you mean? I do not enjoy being in the thick of it, as it were, and I am not content to stay back surrounded by books and learn anything I can. That's why I'm a librarian, after all. The librarian. You mean that old being that we met in the bowels of the Great Swarm Library? My father chuckled. Yes, him. Imagine my surprise when my son suddenly appears with a member of the long-dead race. I hadn't actually interacted with any living beings for nearly a decade. Wait a moment. You are the guardian of the galaxy, for lack of a better term. I prefer caretaker, he interjected. Caretaker of the galaxy, and you just disappeared for a decade. I'm beginning to see why you're not cut out for it. As I told you, I'm a millennium old. Time holds no meaning for me. A decade is nothing to me. Regardless, my tale is unfinished. If you would refrain from further questions until the end, mayhaps we can get to the point. I nodded my agreement, and he continued. I spent my time as best I could, providing assistance to the races that needed it, and granting knowledge to those I found worthy to guide the galaxy in advance. I spent nine hundred years doing this alone, my father had died before that, and there was no one that I could truly connect with in the galaxy. That was my belief until I met your mother. I will spare you the details, but we met, I courted her, and we fell in love. The day that you were born was the happiest day of my life, and the next five years were a close comparison. But my duties called me, and I was forced to leave. I checked upon you over the years, but I lost track around your twentieth year. That would make a good deal of sense. I left home at twenty and began my short and unsuccessful stint as a thief. You came back into my life, or I returned to yours, when you came looking for the Skavalka. Since then, I've been following you, offering my assistance as I could. I did not know how to tell you what I'm telling you now, and so I remained silent, helping from the shadows. It was very fortunate that I was nearby when you foolishly engaged that erg. I lay there for several moments, trying to fully comprehend the magnitude of what my father was telling me. I was not, as I had thought my entire life, Jahan, nor... That's why I'm so big... I could tell that had not been the response that he had been expecting, I elaborated. Over the last two years, I've been getting inexplicably bigger and stronger than I should be possible for a Jahan. Now that I know I'm part elder being, I know why. But how did the crossbreeding work? Separate species cannot make offspring together. The genetics do not work. They do for elder beings. I waited for more, but none was forthcoming. That's it. That's the only explanation you're giving me. That is the only one I have. I do not know how it is possible myself, but yes, that is why you are so much larger and stronger than you should be. Finally, out of all the questions my father's appearance had raised, I got some answers to the mysteries that I had been puzzling about for months. But there were always more questions. How did you save me? I asked. By all rights, I should be dead. Yet here I am, healing with little issue, except for the eyes, of course. Elder beings are gifted with a deep understanding of matter and how to control it. And how, why, what, I asked. And he had a very way of being informative, yet cryptic. Nanites. Those little machines grant us great control of the world around us and over our bodies. An elder being is literally born swimming with nanites. Our genetic makeup is laced with them, with a mastery over our own bodies. An elder being can do nearly anything. 
I almost laughed. The idea was absurd. The thought of being could be made of nanites, or the said nanites afforded a neo-god-like mastery of the world around them was beyond unbelievable. And yet, and yet Clinstone was living proof that nanites could do. He had built himself an arm out of the things that was without mentioning the Randax, who had rebuilt their entire bodies with them. Nanites such as Clinstone's, but he can't shapeshift or heal people. Clintstone. That man is not what he seems, I'm sure of it. The nanites should not even work for him. But he does not have full control over the nanites, only a rudimentary form of what I've seen. I, on the other hand, ripping sound came, have full control over my body. I felt the hand on my shoulder, and then another, and then another... Shouting in surprise, I twisted away and then shouted in pain. I believe you, I shouted at my father. The hands lifted from my arm. I clutched my chest, gasping. If you can grow an extra arm, why couldn't you have healed me fully? That's due to the limit called the conservation of mass. At any given time, there is only so much tissue I have infused with nanites and therefore can manipulate. I did not have enough to fully repair your body. As I was forced to rely solely on tissue since you do not have any nanites infused, I have enough to save your life, and so I did. It was only recently that I have gained the necessary tissue to heal you, and why I've come not earlier. That actually makes sense, I said. I guess, wait, do you mean you've come here to heal me? Of course. I would have been content to let you live out the rest of your life without ever discovering what I was, or anything about outer beings, but the situation has forced my hand. If you didn't want me to learn about this, why didn't you just do it while I was sleeping? Nanites do not belong to the hands of those who do not understand them. If I am to use them to help you, you will be aware of what they are. Will it hurt? I asked. I do not know, he replied with a voice solemn. I've never done this before. Then why? My words were cut short by the touch of a hand to my forehead. What? I started until I felt a ripping sensation across my scalp. Yelping in surprise, I tried to put away, only to find that the hand held melded with my skin. Before any further thoughts could cross my mind, the tingling sensation shot down my spine and through my limbs. With it came the darkness of unconsciousness. End of chapter I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting, and then may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time, and I'll see you then. Cheers.